remember when Rose beat Gotham after five years, four consecutive championship wins, and ended their 67 game winning streak? The 2015 WFTDA tournament season was amazing, and having everyone's favorite team, Rose City, finally take the Hydra from Gotham was the perfect way to end it. This was a special year for several reasons. It was the WFTDA's 10th anniversary, ESPN 3 broadcasted our championship games, and we had 13 non-American teams at playoffs this year. There's been so much movement at the top of D1 that no one really knew what was going to happen during postseason. Helsinki made crazy leaps and bounds to get from D2 to D1 for their playoff debut. Wasatch fell from D1 to D2, and ARC finally made it to championships uh, for the first time ever, and that was so amazing to, to watch. <sighs> Hard eyes. Windy City is in this weird transition period where they lost a whole bunch of their vets and actually didn't even make it to championships this year, which is the first in, I think, their history. Rose, Gotham, Texas, Victoria, and London have all been jostling for the top five spots in D1 pretty much the whole year. And Rat City came to championships for the first time in a few years and just showed the fuck up. Like, I am definitely a new Rat City fan. Kayla Gaska. Oh my god. It was a great tournament season. We saw a lot of new favorites, a lot of veteran talent, and we saw a lot of new trends emerge. Trends like the hypercube, or the box, the tripod, the triangle, the brace three, whatever you want to call it, this defense strategy has been all over the top of WFTDA Derby this year. We saw the beginnings of it last season, and I heard that Tampa has been using it before that, but it was really popularized when Victoria blew up last season. Since then, it's become a staple for many top tier teams, such as Gotham, Rose, and London. This strategy will most likely trickle down to D2 and D3, but it's important to note that the reason teams like Victoria are so successful with this strategy is that they're able to keep all their players on the track, for the most part. Make sure you're paying attention to forearms, multiplayer blocks, and directional penalties. Speaking of penalties, we saw a huge upswing in the amount of forearm penalties assessed during this tournament season. Windy Man of Roller Derby Notes reported a 50% increase in forearm penalties assessed in D2 and a 22% increase in D1. He also pointed out that no one is questioning these calls, for the most part. He reported that there were very few requests to overturn these penalties and none of them were successful. Another trend we saw was the revival of the Star Pass and Star Stash. These have been used in the past sparingly, you know, on occasion, but I believe they were used in almost every single game this tournament season. Another trend we saw was phenomenal toe stop work. You know how when you think of Scald Eagle and the image of her bouncing on her toe stops, just skimming on that outside line pops into your head? That was pretty much all of postseason. We saw a ton of jammers up their toe stop game this year, and it was amazing to watch. Pretty much the entirety of the 2015 WFTDA tournament season was amazing to watch. The overall skill of the top level of WFTDA Derby has really skyrocketed, and the heart and intensity it's known for really shined this season. I mean, even if you hate Gotham, their insane skill made everyone up their game, and our sport is better for it. The end of Gotham's dynasty leaves a lot of excitement for next season. I mean, we have no idea who's going to take the Hydra next year. It could be one of the teams that came so close this year, or it could be a team that none of us have even heard of yet. Either way, it's a really exciting time for Roller Derby right now. So what was your reaction when Rose City won? And what do you think will happen next year? Who do you think will take home the Hydra? Let me know in the comment section below or on Twitter. I would love to hear from you.